Zach, uh, you're coming into this this season healthy, <clears throat> not having an off-season surgery like the previous season. How much of a difference has that made in terms of just your preparation and, and getting into a groove with with learning the nuances of the offense and kind of working on different things? Yeah, it's huge. You know, everyone wants to play at 100%. Um, you know, last year was just rush. You know, no excuses, obviously. I, I should have, you know, done better and, and all that last year. But it's nice coming to this year healthy. You know, I'm uh, I'm super excited that I finally have the ability to feel like, you know, I'm, I'm strides ahead of where I was last year and, and even my freshman year when I was healthy. And, um, you know, I'm super, super excited for this first game. Zach, congratulations on earning the starting job. Knowing how good Baylor and Jaron are, you, you, you know them probably as well as anybody, just how good they are. Having Coach Grimes and coaching staff say you earned the starting job with your performance in fall camp this year, what does that mean to you to have been able to do that with such great competition? Yeah, you know, it, it just leaves it with no doubt. Um, you know, I think it shows your teammates, uh, your coaches, that you're willing to work for it. You know, that's how uh, – Every spot in football, I think, should be. You have to earn the right to play and, and earn the right to play well. And, um, you know, competition just makes everyone better. And so I think uh, that's kind of what we got out of this whole process was was uh, the coaches want to play the best players uh, that they can. And so competition always brings out the best players and everybody. Hey, Jared. <coughs> Probably Mitch. Oh, my fault. Okay, sorry, my bad. Mitch? Mitch, have one. Uh, let's go with Jay Drew. Hey, Zach, this is your third uh, pre or meet up to a game. How would you compare the readiness level of the team for this game a week out as opposed to the last two years? Yeah, I'd say we are, uh, we're definitely a lot further ahead than we've ever been. I think a lot of that has to do with the experience. We have a lot of guys that have played um, in multiple seasons now, and we have a lot of experience coming back. And so when fall camp started, you know, we kind of just hit it in stride. And, and uh, you know, the details of practice and everything was just a little bit different. Everything was a little bit, uh, you know, next level stuff. Everyone kind of uh, understood the basics, and, and that was kind of expected going to fall camp, not not really restarting at day one, but but growing from day one and, and saying, okay, well, now what's the next step of how we can make this even better? And so I think the team is, um, you know, a lot further ahead than where we've been, and, and I'm excited to get going. Okay, we'll take questions from uh, Jason, Jay, and John. Zach, obviously, year after year, there's there's turnover with, with guys graduating and moving on, but when you look at what the offense has around you, how would you describe the weapons that you have at your disposal this season? Yeah, I would say playmakers. I would say that's one of the biggest things BYU has um, been known for as, as far as lacking. And, uh, you know, this year I think we have some playmakers. We got, you know, young guys now stepping up into their third year, now upperclassmen that, you know, just getting the ball in their hands are going to make plays. You know, even guys that you don't talk about as much, but this O-line is, is a really good O-line. They're going to come through and um, be one of the most dominant O-lines in, in the country, I'm sure. And um, you know, these guys have, have really put in the work. And so, you know, I would just say that everyone at every position is just making plays and, and they're doing their job. And, and I think that's what's most important. When people talk about Navy, for obvious reasons, a lot of people just focus on the offensive side of the football. But their defense took, a, took some big strides last year, and I think they're looking to continue that. When you look at the midshipman defense, what do you see? Yeah, a lot of chaos. I'd say that's what they try and create, right? And, uh, you know, they were ranked, I think, 16th in the country last year in total defense. And, um, you know, they cause a lot of problems for an offense. And uh, you got to be disciplined in what you're seeing and what's going on. And, and you got to have uh, the ability to, you know, make make the best play that you can on every play by by understanding what they're giving you. And, and I would say that's, that's probably the biggest thing they're doing is just trying to cause havoc. They're trying to, you know, get pressure, um, bait you into throwing something you probably shouldn't be throwing. And so uh, they're a well-disciplined uh, team. Jay and then John Coon and then Mitch Hey Zach, uh, Ed Lamb said today that uh, no players were opting out. Uh, I know you personally, you wouldn't, uh, you wouldn't do that. Uh, I mean, obviously you love football so much, 
but have you had to talk any players into not opting out or has that kind of been pretty unanimous? Yeah, I mean, the whole opting out thing is their, is their personal choice. You know, I would never try and, you know, feel like I'm putting someone at risk by, by, by trying to, you know, urge them one way or the other as far as that decision. You know, I feel like uh, it was never a decision that actually came, came to and actually had to be discussed. I feel like we asked the question one time of guys that felt like, um, you know, not playing the season would have been an issue and, and not one person stood up and said anything. And so, um, you know, if someone did, you know, that's their own personal decision and that has to do with, you know, the ones they live with, their family, their choices, you know, any, any other conditions that they have. And so we would all respect that. But, um, you know, it was, it was never really something we had to talk about just because, you know, the guys are all bought in and, and ready to go and they understand the, uh, the risk that we're taking. And, you know, it's, it's definitely worth it, worth it to play some college football. John. Zach, you know, look, looking at Navy and the, their uh, ball control offense running the triple option, they, they like to pound it, pound it, pound it. From from your perspective on the other side, with, with your with BYU's offense, how how much of a premium does that put on extending drives on your end and finishing drives when you know that? that they really are kind of a ball control style with how they play. Yeah, you know, you got to be smart as far as, uh, you know, controlling the field. We can't, you can't go three and out multiple times in a row. You can't, um, you know, just keep stalling on drives. You got to have extended drives, whether you score or not. You got to be able to hold on to the ball for a little bit. Um, you know, turnovers are a big one too. Teams that turn the ball over against ball control teams are the ones that lose it as well. And a uh, big focus for us is, is just not getting you know, stiff on the sideline while we're waiting to go back up on offense and, and you know, trusting in what we're seeing and, and being able to still come out and make plays after sitting on the bench for a good 15 minutes or whatever it is, is uh, we need to be able to, to be ready at all times. Zach, I apologize if this was asked already. I came in late to add some dino nuggets and to get my kids 2020, I guess. But uh, um, I'm just curious, you know, being a quarterback, number one, it's, it's, a, it's a difficult work. you got to put in a lot of work to get to that point. Just maybe describe the, the work that you put in to uh, get back to this point to being the starting quarterback and, and lead this program in 2020. Yeah, you know, whether or not, you know, they said I was – uh, the starter from day one last year, or or it was a competition this fall. No matter what, you know the work that I put in this off season was going to be exactly the same as what I did this off season. I think that just you know that has to show as far as your character and, and your personality that you know never get complacent with your spot and never never take it for granted and never think, oh well I'm the starter so I need to you know I can I can chill a little bit. But um, you know every off season is is an opportunity to uh, take it to the next level and. Um, achieve new goals and, and you know maybe striving to be the number one on the team but now it's striving to be uh, one of the best in the country or, or whatever it is and so um, that offseason preparation was going to be the same no matter what and so um, you know I wanted to give everything I could to help this team win this next year. A lot of talk has been made about the offensive line just maybe speak to the growth that room has taken in fall camp a lot of returning experience what those guys need to you. Yeah, those guys are uh, studs. You know, all of them have had some playing time now, a um, couple years under their belts. And, um, you know, I'd say the biggest thing with the O-line is, is how close all of them are, their connection. And um, I know they're always going up there and watching film together and, and studying the playbook and um, coming out and walking through plays, whatever it is. But all of them do everything together. And I think that's, that's really important, right, because it's all one unit and um, they all rely on each other. And I would say that's, that's huge. You know, those guys, they, those guys all trust each other and want each other to be the best they can be. And so... Um, you know, I'm excited to watch those guys ball out, especially on Labor Day. Hey, we'll take a question from Jared and then Jay Catch. Zach, you've always embraced the big stage, and this is maybe the biggest stage you'll get this year, you know, playing a, a team that was ranked last year on Labor Day on ESPN, all of that. So I imagine that there's definitely a desire to make the most of that. How do you balance that with – you know, not getting caught up in the moment or getting, you know, away from yourself. How do you find that balance between making most of the moment and, and not getting carried away by the moment? Yeah, you know, it's always, you don't want to take the highs too high and the lows too low. You know, you always kind of want to be balanced in everything that you do. And uh, especially as a quarterback, you got to be level-minded. You never uh, read into the outside noise. You always just trust the teammates around you. You listen to your coaches and uh, you got to do what they ask you to do. And um, you know, even though we're probably going to have tons of people watching our games, it's not going to feel like that when we're playing against Navy. The stadium's going to be empty. It's going to be 
uh, probably feeling kind of like a scrimmage. And so that's really the time we just dial in. You don't worry about that other stuff. And, you know, you uh, you just execute. I think that's the biggest thing we got to focus on. Thanks, Zach. Zach, I wanted to ask you, you've been here, this is your third season at BYU. You've been here along with Aaron Roderick, Jeff Grimes, and their run here as well. How different is this offense going into this year than it has been in previous years? Yeah, I'll just say uh, getting a little bit closer to finding that identity. You know, I think we're there, and I think we know what we want to do um, as far as just schematics. And um, we have the players that we've had over the last, uh, you know, it's the third year for a lot of us that are playing still. And, um, you know, I'd say the progression as an offense, the maturity comes when you hit about that third year. And so, um, you know, I feel like everyone's dialed in with what we're doing. Everyone, everyone knows what we're trying to accomplish. Everyone knows, you know, the game plan, exactly what we're trying to do. And so, you know, I would just say the maturity of this offense is so much further than it's ever been, and everyone's, everyone's ready to get going. Specifically, I wanted to ask you about the offensive line. What have you seen from their progression from last year as compared to this year? Yeah, huge. You know, the offensive line, um, you know, the big boys up front have guys that have had experience, like I mentioned earlier, and, um, you know, they're getting after it every single day. And, um, you know, physically, size-wise, those guys are huge. And, you know, they're all freak athletes. I see them out here running 40s and, you know, they're getting under five flats. And, and you know, we got some strong, powerful dudes. And um, just the camaraderie with all of them and, and you know, the rest of the team is, uh, you know, those are the guys that set the tempo in the game. And those are the ones that come out and smack you in the mouth first. And so, um, you know, their, their progress from last year, you know, is already huge. You know, just talking to some of the D linemen, I talked to Kyrus about it and he's like, you know what, the O-line, you know, they're really getting there. They're good, you know, compared to last year. And so, um, you know, I'm glad I wouldn't want anyone else up there protecting me. So 